This video is going to talk about models and frameworks. Essentially, all models are wrong, but some models are useful. What's the difference between a model and a framework? A model is a mathematical representation of a system, while a framework is a qualitative organizing principle for analyzing systems. Recall the rational planning process. Is that a model or a framework? So, why would we want a model? It allows us to gain insight into complicated situations by understanding the simpler situations that resemble them. It allows us to optimize something. It allows us to operate the system better. We learn from building the model itself, and we can use the model as a negotiating tool. We can use it to enable people to agree to what the state of the reality is if a certain situation occurs, and it forces people to understand what their explicit trade-offs are. Modeling shapes the worldview and, and vice versa. So your worldview is your perspective on the world. And if you engage in modeling, you're going to have a different worldview afterwards than before. You're going to think about how the world works differently. What is your point of view? Well, what are your results for? Is it subjective advocacy or is it for objective analysis? As engineers, hopefully it's for objective analysis, but models are also used for an advo advocacy, for people trying to persuade others of their position. These are not inherently at odds with each other because you might be trying to persuade people that your objective analysis is correct. So a worldview is your outlook on life and on the world. It's your internal model of how the world works. Okay. For instance, your worldview probably says that the sun will rise tomorrow. That's your perspective on, on what happens. It's your belief about how the world works. Why would you believe that? Well, because the sun has risen every day. Now, of course, if you're not on planet Earth, or if you're thinking about it like a physicist, you don't think of the sun rising. You think of the Earth rotating and you might see it from a different perspective. So your worldview is very subjective because where you stand depends on where you sit. There are many types of models that we can use. These range from network analysis to life cycle costing and a whole slew of them in between. All of these have been used in transportation to solve particular types of problems. So how do you go about building a model? Well, you have to make a number of modeling decisions about what the state of the model will be. Are you dealing with a hierarchy of models? Is, does model A feed into model B? Um, what is the scale of the system that you're modeling? Are you modeling a region, a planet, a neighborhood, a street, a vehicle, an individual person? What's the time frame? Is this a model of what happens over two seconds, two minutes, two hours? two days, two weeks, two months, two years, two decades? What's the spatial extent? So part of this has to do with scale, but is there a boundary that you have to deal with? So for the metropolitan Twin Cities region, which counties are inside your system and which si counties are outside your system is an important question. It doesn't affect very much about how your model performs at the very center of the region, but it affects a lot how the model performs at the edge. Are you dealing in a macroscopic or microscopic way of looking at things? Macroscopically, you're looking at zones and flows versus individuals and vehicles. Is it static or dynamic? Are you trying to get the projection of a snapshot in time or an average over a period? Or are you looking at movement across time? Is the model dynamic? Is it stochastic, random, or is it deterministic? Do we know, is everything known with certainty? Is it linear or nonlinear? Is it continuous or discrete? Is it a simulation or is there a closed form analytical solution? Does it deal with behavior? Does it deal with of individuals or does it deal with behavior of aggregates? Is it a physical model or a mathematical model? Is it solved in real time or is it solved offline? Does it consider all of the feedback effects or just some of them? Is it short term versus long term? Is it predictive or is it responsive? Does it try to change how we're going to behave? Is it proactive or reactive? 
Is it centralized or decentralized? Are the agents acting for the good of the whole or the good of themselves individually? Is the model in equilibrium? So there's a number of solution techniques, of course, depending on the model that you're using. You need to understand the system. We have approximations that we use to help solve the, solve the system faster. Um, and this is very important for large-scale models because we often can't solve it exactly in a reasonable amount of time. We need to speed the model up. We might look for local optima rather than global optima. We might be looking for certain solutions that are good enough. The question is, which of these things is most important? Because there's a lot of trade-offs. There's a limited amount of money. There's a limited amount of data and information. There's a limited amount of computational power. There's a limited amount of labor, the engineer's time in solving this. You can make the model easier to use, but that requires programming more on the back end. You can try to make the model more convincing to others through graphic displays. You can try to make it more useful into the future by making it extendable. You might want to provide more evidence of model benefits. You might want to think about how do you measure model success. But all of these things take time and they're trade-offs. Which of these things is the most important to, for you to do? So, we'll look at an example. Personal rapid transit is a proposed technology. They deal with small cars that run on tracks above the street system. And these cars um, can take you from an origin to a destination without stopping. So it's thought of as a personalized transit experience because you're not using your own private vehicle. You're paying to use a vehicle. But it's taking you from an origin to destination as long as it's on the particular network. So your homework problem, the Metropolitan Council of Governments, which is the region's main transportation planning agency, is examining whether the Twin Cities should build a new personal rapid transit system in downtown Minneapolis. They've asked you to recommend how it should be analyzed. What kinds of models should be used? Why? What data should be collected?